Hi, I'm Gareth Green and in this video we're going to be thinking about how we might go about composing using a five note pitch set. So what do I mean by this? Basically what it says on the tin. You just give yourself five notes and then you think how can I work a piece out of these five notes? Now you might say, why would I want to do that? I mean, there are seven notes in a major or a minor scale. Why don't I work with seven notes? Absolutely fine. Work with seven notes, use all of the notes of the chromatic scale and give yourself 12 notes. Um, that's what serial music is doing, for example. But working with a set of notes is one way in which people go about composing. It really sort of focuses things a little bit by making you concentrate on how you might use these notes, how you might construct, say in this case, a group of five notes, how those notes relate to each other, and then what can you do with them to make a piece engaging. For example, you can stick with the five notes throughout, just keep repeating them, keep presenting them in different kinds of ways, um, or you can say, well, I'm starting with these five notes and then I'm going to kind of extend beyond them in some way. So there's some sense of development from those five notes. And we're going to just use one short piece written by this Australian composer, Peter Sculthorpe, who died in 2014. And he was just out to do some of his composition just using a small pit set like this. So we'll see how Peter Sculthorpe goes about this in a piece of music called Snow from uh, a collection of three short movements called Snow, Moon and Flowers. And he uses these five notes. So let's have a look at Peter Sculthorpe's five notes. He's gone for A flat, G, E, E flat, C, now you might sort of think, well, is that some kind of sound that I know about? It sort of almost feels a little bit bluesy, doesn't it? You know, that we're, we're going, if we start on C, but then we've got a minor third and a major third, and then G, which is kind of completing the C major chord or the C minor chord. So you can immediately see possibilities for this. You can even see an A flat major chord, C, E flat, a flat, so there's things you can do with that. But this sort of idea that you've got a tonic and this kind of sort of blues third as well as the major third, and then the fifth, and then the semitone above that. I mean, you could do all sorts of things with those five notes that don't have to be too radical. I mean, just putting down a C major chord. you're doing something kind of quite bluesy and no time at all with that pitch set. That's not at all what Peter Sculthorpe is doing in his piece. But I'm just sort of trying to make the point that you can come up with a five note pitch set and take it in so many different directions. But it's quite a fun thing to do. And as a composer, it's quite a disciplined thing to do. And that's not a bad thing. Often when we're composing, we've got all sorts of ideas and we dart about from one place to another. And sometimes we just need to kind of hone in a bit, don't we, kind of nail it down. So we've got something that the piece is based on and we're really thinking out how we're going to develop that ingredient so the piece has a life and a kind of evolution of its own. Well, let's see what Peter Sculthorpe gets up to with this pit set in his piece called Snow. Well, one thing he does is to kind of dislocate these notes into different octaves, and that can make a huge difference. I mean, if you put them close together. Okay, we've talked about how that might work. This is what Peter Sculthorpe does. He has the A flat here, the G is a seventh height, then he comes down to this E here, and then he goes E flat, and then he comes back to C. Has a massively different impact, doesn't it, from just putting those notes together at close quarters. So it immediately makes the point, just by dislocating things into different octaves, it gets quite interesting. You might do both of those things within the same piece. So there's nothing to say you couldn't extend this idea of A flat up there, G up down there, E, E flat, C. You could really space out the notes. 
You can go up, you can go down, you can have some close together, some wide apart. Already, we begin to see lots of options just working with five notes. So it's not something that has to box you in. So you're just thinking, well, what am I going to do? Just repeat these five notes over and over again. That could be a bit tedious, couldn't it? So there needs to be some kind of evolution. Actually, what Peter Skelthorpe does in his piece is he starts with these five notes and he kind of repeats them, but then he allows the five notes to evolve in some way. And let's see how he does that. Well, first of all, he takes the five notes in the pitch that in the kind of octaves that I've just been talking about, and he gives it a kind of rhythmic life. So he starts off like this, quite quietly, lots of pedal as well. So that creates atmosphere. And even though you're hearing single notes, they're all kind of connected by the sustaining pedal going like this. So you see how that starts off. It's kind of fascinating how he does that, isn't it? Just by giving it a bit of rhythmic life, a bit of atmosphere with a sustained pedal, kind of choosing a tempo that's reasonably slow. And then he marks it lontano, sort of distantly. And then you might sort of notice what he's doing with those notes, because we start off with the five notes, don't we? So one, two, three, four five, then he repeats them at the same pitch. One, two, three, four. But you notice we don't hear five. Where did number five go? Disappeared and the rhythm changed slightly. What does he do next? Here's the third bar, the third measure. He does this. So we start exactly the same. Now, what's he done this time? Well, he's taken the first three notes, A flat, G, E. Then he takes the next two notes and transposes them a third higher. So G flat, E flat. Ah, and then he goes back and he repeats what he did the second time round. So we've gone back to the first four notes again, missing the fifth note in the same rhythm that he have on the, the second presentation. So you see what we've had now, we've already had four presentations of it, but you see how things kind of just gradually evolve. So let's put those four together and see what we think. You see, it's full of atmosphere, isn't it? Now, you may like that piece, or you might think, oh, it's not really my cup of tea. But there's nothing to say you can't use the same set of notes and do something a little bit bluesy, as we demonstrated earlier on. So there are all sorts of possibilities. And this is also showing you through this example by Peter Skullthorpe that you're not stuck with these five notes. You've got this five note idea that the piece is based on, but actually you can miss out a note. You can transpose a couple of notes. You can change the rhythm. You can use space in between. You can do things with articulation or with dynamics or the use of the pedal. And then sometimes you might just want to have a bit of a contrast from it, which is exactly what he does next, because he does this. So that's something that's a really a little bit independent of these notes. You can find links with them if you want to find search them out. Uh, like we've got this, you know, falling third. Well, that's something that features in the original thing, you know, the E flat to C thing, that's a falling third. And it's a minor third as he's using here. Um, he's got these left hand chords going in fourth. So there's something slightly different happening there as well. But then after that little burst, well, he kind of comes back to doing something similar again, but he starts to modify the opening note. So he does this. So that's not quite the same as the opening. And then he does these chords that he put in the left hand a moment ago. And then 
it kind of finishes off that idea again. So the piece goes on and just evolves slightly, but just a handful of measures later, he's kind of back with the same pitch set. with the transposition again that he had at the beginning. So you see, this starts to sound a bit familiar. And then that's almost the end of the movement because then he finishes off with his falling fourth that he used in that middle bit we talked about. And then he just has a final chord to finish off using some of the notes of the five note pitch set. So you see, Peter Skelzol is fairly free with it. He's got a five note pitch set as a kind of germ of an idea. He repeats it, he reworks it rhythmically, he includes a bit of transposition, he includes a little bit of contrasting material, returns to it again, so it feels like our old familiar friend on which the whole of this piece is built. And then he really thinks about what he's doing with other aspects of the music, with the rhythm, dynamics, articulation, choice of tempo, use of the pedal and so on, to create the atmosphere that he wants. It's a compositional idea that you might want to work with, especially if you're the kind of composer who's just kind of darting around from one idea to the next because you're just full of all these creative ideas, which is fantastic stuff, but a way of kind of honing it down a bit. And also thinking about this piece, just thinking sometimes less is more. You don't have to fill your piece of music with notes everywhere, with everybody going flat out. Sometimes just having single notes can be very effective. You can use silence between sound as well, just to create extra atmosphere. Anyway, I hope that's going to be of some inspiration if you're a composer thinking, I could just do with a sort of new thought, something a little bit different to work with, maybe just to enhance what I'm doing, or maybe to take me in a new direction. Well, if you've enjoyed this video, you might want to go to our website, www.mmcourses.co.uk. On the homepage, you can click on courses and that will take you to a whole load of material that is designed to empower musicians. So if you're really wanting to improve your harmony skills, your theory knowledge, your oral ability, your ability to analyze music, you want to know more about composing, all sorts of things on there that would really assist you in that course. So have a look through, see what's there. While you're back on the homepage, click on Maestros. That's our international musical community. And we've got three levels of membership nothing to do with ability. Level one is just a kind of engagement level, uh, gives you access to a number of perks, which are quite fun and enable you just to keep more closely in touch with what we're doing. If you want to go on to level two, you have all the benefits of being a level one member, but also extra benefits, including access to a monthly live stream where I spend an hour teaching each month, but we run a live chat so you can comment, ask questions, uh, raise other musical topics that you want to think about, even suggest things that we might cover in future live streams. I'm very responsive to that. So that's the kind of level two group and it just connects you with other people on the same kind of journey. And if you want to take the ultimate step, well, join us at level three, you get all the benefits of level one and level two. And in addition to extra perks, you also have an additional live stream every month. And this is very much more individually focused. So it means that you can submit a composition, uh, a score, a recording, a piece of theory, an exercise, a musical idea you're working on, or a recording of yourself performing something. I'll give you individual evaluative feedback on that. And we share all this material with the other members of this level three group. And again, we're running a live chat so people can ask questions, offer their support, their reflections, very positive group of people. And we all learn from each other. People constantly tell me that they learn so much by seeing and hearing what other people are doing in the group and it inspires them in new directions as well. 
Anyway, it's all there. Have a look and see what you can find that would be really helpful to you in the next chapter of your musical journey. www.mmcourses.co.uk